Today we profile his eminence, Adam Cardinal Mida, a.k.a. Mikey. That's what his mom called him to the day she died, Mikey. He's born in 1936 outside Pittsburgh. He was ordained in 1956 and earned a doctorate in canon law. He was the Bishop of Green Bay from 1984 to 1990. And then he became the Archbishop of Detroit in 1990 and served as our leader through 2009. In 1994, Pope John Paul II named him a Cardinal. So in November of 94, Cardinal Mita goes with his Polish mom, his brother, Father Ted, who was a parish priest in Pittsburgh, and another brother who had a family, and they go to Rome for him to be installed as a cardinal. He gets a call from the Pope. Adam, could you, you and your family have dinner with me in my residence the night before on a Saturday night? So here you have this Polish mom with her three sons, one of which is going to become a cardinal the next day, having dinner with the Polish Pope. Just imagine that. Cardinal Mita was always a very classy dresser. This is a story about no matter how old you are, or the status in the world that you are, to your mom, you're always a little boy. So the next morning, Cardinal Mite is getting ready. He's going to be installed as a cardinal. I believe at the time there was only eight active cardinals in America. And his mom walked in. And he's got a shirt on, special cuffs. And his mom says, Mikey, that shirt is wrinkled. How many times have I told you how to fold the shirt and the luggage so it's not wrinkled, Mikey? Mikey, we've got to find an iron, an ironing board. We've got to iron the shirt. Mikey, you didn't get a haircut. I told you to get a haircut. It's scraggly in the back. We've got to find some scissors. We've got to fix the hair, Mikey. He says, well, Mom, I've been busy. Mikey. We got to cut the hair. Mikey, those cufflinks are nice, but I like the other ones better. Have you got the other ones? No matter who you are or how old, to your mom, you're always that little boy. That's a good thing. So he was installed that day. He loved sports. He loved football. He was the chaplain for the Pittsburgh Steelers when he was in Pittsburgh. Then at Green Bay, he got to the, go to the Packers games. Then he got to know the Ford family for the Lions games. He loved sports. He loved golf. There was a tournament one day that he hosted. And he got a hole in one. He's probably the only cardinal in the history of the Catholic Church that's ever got a hole in one. Normally, when you get a hole in one, you have to treat everybody on the course to a drink. It's on you. That day, none of us got a free drink. In fact, all of us had to make a special contribution to him because he got a hole in one. Normally when you play, if the putt is inside the leather, being that you have the putter head, and then you have where you grip it, the leather. If it's within three feet or so, you can give the person the putt. When you played with Cardinal Mita, if it was inside the crozier, this is the staff that all these cardinals use when they're doing something official. It's like an eight-foot crozier. If it was within the eight foot, the cardinal got that putt. If you ever bet him 
any lost that day on the golf course. Whatever you bet him, he didn't pay you in dead presidents. He would simply say, oh, my son, here's a special blessing. That's how you got repaid for the bet. In April of 2005, St. John Paul II passed. There were five million people that came to Rome. People loved John Paul II. Young people loved John Paul II. He said, Jack, here is in a pine box with no possessions, no power anymore. And here's about 110 cardinals on the steps going up to St. Peter's, the pine box. Here's 5 million people. And right here are 450 of the most powerful people on the face of the earth. President George W. Bush went, President Clinton, Condoleezza Rice, a few others representing America. All the power in the world, Jack, came to honor this man who had no possessions and no power. He said, that was one of the most striking days of my life. Cardinal Mita's mom died in the mid-90s. She was in the mid-90s of her life. He would call her every day. She lived in Pittsburgh. Just to say, Mom, how are you doing? So when he went to Detroit Metro to fly to Rome for the conclave after the funeral, when they were going to select the next pope, he called his mom. Mom, I'm getting on a plane. I'm going to go to Rome for the conclave. She says, Mikey, I've been praying that you don't become the pope. Well, mom, an American cardinal is not going to become the pope. But mom, why are you praying that I don't become the pope? Well, Mikey, because if you become the pope, you won't have any time to call me anymore. A mom is always a mom. He was the 10th guest I ever had on the radio show. It was August, I believe, 2005. And at the end of the show, I would say, thanks for listening. Make it a great week. And please remember, anything is possible. And then the Slovak word, spo. So I said that, and he's right there, and he says, Jack, let's change one thing. Let's add, with God, anything is possible. And so for the next 960 or so guests, we've always ended it. Thanks for listening. Because with God, anything is possible. Spoke. One of the first things Cardinal Mita did when he came to Detroit was his predecessor, Cardinal Shaka, who was going to Rome to become the CFO under John Paul II, had a deal to sell 200 plus acres in this St. John's Seminary in Plymouth, Michigan. And they were going to knock the whole facility down and build a bunch of high-end homes. Beautiful area, Plymouth. And Cardinal Shaka decided, I'll let my pred I'll let my successor sign the deal. Cardinal Mida said, No, I'm going to go to Bill Pulte, Fran Sen, Bob Lassick three Catholic business leaders in town. And he asked them, what would you do with this? And they said, Father, don't sell it. You got a 27-hole golf course. Turn that over to Carl's Golf Land. They'll give us a lot of money every year for that. And let's create a family center. There's a beautiful chapel there, etc." Hmm. 
Today, that chapel has over 250 weddings a year in that chapel alone. It's a spectacular facility. And a number of years later, Cardinal Minor went to Bill Pulte and said, Bill, we've got people coming every week and every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, multiple weddings, and they're staying at all these local hotels. These hotels are getting rich off of us. We should have a hotel right on the campus. Bill, would you build a hotel for me? $27 million later, there's a beautiful hotel. Furnished, furnished etc. Bill Pulte as a gift. Gave it to the Archdiocese. He wrote his philosophy of life for me. Here it is. That's the story of his eminence, Adam Cardinal Maida. Thanks for watching. Until we meet again, please remember, with God, anything, anything is possible. Spoke.